think we're going to find some live native mussels here today? I think so. This, this is a sad reality that we aren't guaranteed to find native species of mussels in our waterways. The impacts of zebra mussels are detrimental to the future outlook and success of native ecosystems. They quickly take over lakes, streams, and rivers, draining all ecological communities and pushing animals extinct. They alter by decreasing water quality, remove available food, and overtake native habitat. So, what are zebra mussels? Ricena polymorpha, commonly known as zebra mussels in the class Bivalvia, are small freshwater mussels that have been accidentally introduced to numerous areas around the world and have become listed among the nine worst aquatic invasive species. They are native to Black, Caspian, and Avob seas in Asia. They have striped triangular shells, which is where they receive their name. No native predator, they eat all of the phytoplankton in the water, reducing food for native food webs, creating devastating impacts to ecosystems. Zebra mussels are also detrimental to man-made objects such as pipes and power plants because they attach on and constrict water flow. This can cause backups and millions of dollars in damage. In addition, they can cut swimmers' feet and contribute to bioaccumulation. Now widely accepted that the secondary spread to inland lakes, rivers, and streams is mostly associated with human activity via veliger larvae carried within trailered boat compartments and juvenile and adult mussels attached to plants and other boating equipment between bodies of water. These dire impacts on not only humans, but also ecosystems, have driven more research into how to study behaviors and biological systems in order to prevent and stop their spread. Researchers at the University of Minnesota examined the influence on stream connections of veliger larvae, determining on the scale of downstream dispersal versus upscale dispersal. Downstream dispersal refers to where the products get produced and distributed. Veliger larvae is the planktonic larva of many kinds of sea and freshwater snails, as well as most bivalve mollusks. For lake and stream systems were involved in this field study, the Pine River, Gold River, Pelican River, and Minnehaha Creek systems. These lakes and streams were chosen due to their high potential for downstream dispersals. Lakes were tailed as infested or not and connected or not, and a 2 times 2 table was constructed. Then, a G-test was used to determine, one, whether the zebra mussel infestation um, incidence was dependent on being up or downstream of a connected infested lake, and two, the influence of the stream distance on zebra mussel infestation. So the zebra mussel villagers were established at the outlet of the infested source lake. The villagers were obtained from the plankton toes in each station. Vertical toes of the entire water column were taken with a 50 micrometer mesh net, 30 centimeters in diameter and 120 centimeters in length. The vulgar concentration then was counted by sterile microscope. The risk threshold was 0.1 vulgar per second, which corresponded to 8,600 vulgars per day. Since only 0 to 0.7% um, early stage larvae could reach the settlement stage and only 1% of the larvae could survive through the settlement stage, 8,600 vulgars per day will yield less than one surviving larva per day. Though only one larvae survives each day, there are thousands of zebra mussels present, representing an R-selected species. The researchers found that the connected lakes were infested at a rate of 8.7 times higher than the lakes that were not connected. Of those connected lakes, the percentage of those infested that were downstream was 3.1 times higher than those that were upstream. Additionally, the researchers noticed that the distance between the lakes affects infestation. The farther the lakes are apart, from each other, the less likely veligers will live to travel between the lakes. Often, the habitat in the streams and rivers connecting the lakes is not conducive to zebra mussel development, and the veligers will die. This was seen and verified across the state of Minnesota in all areas of study. Therefore, the likelihood of zebra mussel spawn reaching far distances is low, but that means in due time, the mussels will eventually make it that far because the larvae will mature in the closer lakes and then spawn to trickle down the watershed. With each lake they infest, they quickly wipe out the native species and grow rapidly to reproduce again and infest the next lake they are connected. The researchers determined that stream dispersal of villagers poses a high risk for zebra mussel spread throughout the state. It was also noted that boats traveling between lakes on connected waterways contributes to their spread. This means that boats connect both as an overland and in-water transporter of the mussels. Although focus on the spread of zebra mussels is mostly on boats, the study proved that the larvae can spread through the water through connected streams without human influence. However, management efforts for lakes that are downstream of infested lakes are still best focused on watercraft inspections. Because wetlands are bad habitat for veligers and adult mussels, restoration of wetlands surrounding the lakes are also a good preventative measure. So when the ice finally melts and we can get back in the lakes, 
make sure your boat is extra clean. Hopefully then we will be guaranteed to find some live native mussels. Thank you.